What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke. And today we're gonna cook some delicious beef three bone plate ribs on the Pit Boss Vertical. We're gonna cook these today using some pellets that I've been hearing a lot about recently. I'm usually all about my just Pit Boss competition blend with whatever flavor profile I want to enhance in my smoke tube. We're gonna try these out. These are a blend of post oak, pecan, and cherry, which are three of most people's favorite woods to barbecue with. And they're combined here, right here in this championship blend from the B&B brand. So I was over in Tuscaloosa, so I swung by Academy Sports and picked these up. And while I was over there, I stopped at North River Cattle Company in Northport, got me some beef short ribs, very hard to find in this area of the country. And they had some, so I'm really excited about it. This is up. Right at six pound rack. Yeah, I've had a lot of trouble finding them. And when they said they had some, they could have told me just about any price and I was leaving with them. Six pounds, never frozen, fresh cut. Reading through Aaron Franklin's book, what he says about his plate ribs is that he does not cut any of the fat off really, unless there's just loose pieces or super thick pieces. And so what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna leave the fat cap and we're gonna be kind of sticking with his method. And what he likes to do is slather on a little bit of hot sauce. The hot sauce I'm using today is the Texas hot sauce. And this is from Community Gardens. Uh, their hot sauces are excellent. They sent me some of this stuff out a while back and I've just been eating it. And I realized that uh, when I was making this that, man, I need to put this, some of this on these ribs and see how it does. Now you're not gonna have a lot of the heat from this hot sauce make its way through to the end of the cook, but what you are gonna get is just a layer of flavor and the fact that this is a chunky hot sauce, it's just gonna help it to hang in there and leave a little bit more flavor on the ribs. Our dry seasoning that we're using today is the brisket rub from Lane's Barbecue. It's got everything you want in it. You wanna go a little bit heavier when you're seasoning beef ribs than you would with brisket. Brisket is very rich, and the only thing richer than brisket is beef ribs. And so you don't have to worry about going too heavy with it. I don't know if y'all had bad weather last night, but we did. Considering this video is probably coming out a few weeks after I make it, probably doesn't make any sense. But hey, maybe you did get some bad weather last night and you're like, how did he know? How did he get this video out this quickly? I don't know. When you're doing beef short ribs, you do not remove the membrane like you do on pork ribs. This is gonna cook for about six to nine hours. In that time, you're gonna have a lot of breakdown. And if you remove the membrane, it's gonna just fall off the bone. And you can serve these off the bone. I've made one other video about short ribs. And if you watch that, you know, I like to serve mine on the bone just because man, I pay good money for these to be on the bone. And uh, I like the presentation. I like the whole shebang -a bang now, if you've never made beef short ribs before, you're probably thinking, man, those things look thin. Why are they so thin? Usually when I see people cut them on Instagram, they look real thick. What's gonna happen is, is this meat is gonna draw up. It's gonna pull back on the bones and it's gonna thicken like crazy. It's so cool. You don't wanna skip any surface with your seasoning here. Make sure that you get everything seasoned. That way you get a great crust, a great bark on these ribs to complement all of that delicious fat that's gonna break down. I can go ahead and tell y'all something. That daggone championship blend smoke coming out of my smoker right now is smelling awesome. I'm really digging the smell, making me hungry. And I still got about eight, nine hours before I can even think about eating this. But that's pretty much all that you have to do. Let's go ahead and uh, get these into the smoke. Just over the four hour mark, this thing is looking plenty juicy. You can see why there's not really much need to spritz it. The reason I'm opening up the chamber is because I'm running a little bit low in my water. You get some more in there. Smoke tube is still kicking out smoke at four hours. So these pellets are not burning hot. They're burning nice and slow. Getting great color on these ribs. Wow. We are just over the six hour mark and the meter says that we are at 203 degrees. Let's double check this bad boy with the thermopin just for good measure. And if you'll notice, butter, butter, butter. Very little tug, butter, butter, butter. Oh, ho, ho, this thing's gonna be so good after a rest. I can't even explain how good it's gonna be. Got a little fire going back there in the back of my pellet tube. That pellet tube held in there in the entire cook. 
Good thing we're taking it out now, right? Oh my gosh. Holy guacamole, look at this thing. Oh, oh, it's squishy. It's so incredibly, oh, ho, ho, ho. yes. We're gonna let this thing just kind of sit out in the air for a minute. I want it to come down just a few degrees. That way it doesn't continue to cook. I got a good breeze going out here. That way it doesn't continue to cook on up past about 210. I think it's safe up to 210, but you don't want to go past that. You risk drying it out. Then we're going to wrap it up in this waxless butcher paper and we're going to let it rest for about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. I may not make it that long. I don't know, but this crust is next level. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, so it's been sitting around in the wind for a little while and the temp has now dropped down into the 190s. That means that it's gonna to continue to come down and that I'm not gonna to continue to cook this thing up into the 200s, which is not something I wanna do. What we wanna do is we're just gonna give it a quick flip and hopefully we will not lose a bone in the process. This thing is very tender and the membrane in the bottom has disintegrated. We're gonna leave our meter in. So this is a post cooked wrap as opposed to a you know wrap to avoid the stall. I had plenty of time today, wasn't worried about the stall, wasn't worried about time. So I just let it go in the smoke all the way through. I know that the bark that this produced is next level, next level. And hopefully it's gonna be nice and moist on the inside when everything's said and done. Flip it over. And I'm just gonna put several layers of towels over it and just let it sit out. I'm not gonna do you know, a super long rest. I'm just gonna monitor the temp with it resting under these towels. Once it gets to that 145 degree mark, we're gonna cut it up, see how it does, man. Okay, carnivores, so it is time. The uh, meter has this just around 150 degrees and I can't wait any longer and my kids are about to be home from daycare for it's not gonna be nearly as quiet around here. So let's just go ahead and get into these ribs and see what it do. Been resting about an hour and a half. I think that's pretty good. Aaron Franklin says, take them off the smoke and serve. I don't think so, Aaron Franklin. Here at American Smoke, we like to let things rest a little bit because typically that makes things better. If I could have went four hours, I probably would have went four hours. Let's go ahead, get the paper off of these, have a look at them. Oh, oh that's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go ahead and get this out of here right now before I cut it in half out of pure excitement. Wow, look at these things. Oh, oh, it's still so mushy. It's like a gelatin mold. Look at the sun glistening off of that right there. Oh, let's just cut it. Let's just, let's just. Let's just make a cut. Oh, 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 oh. oh y'all just don't even know. I've been looking for these for quite some time. Oh, nailed it. Look at that right there. Oh my gosh. That is what dreams are made of right there. Just ooey gooey, still hotter than I thought it would be to the touch. Barely holding on to the bone, just barely holding on. Oh my gosh. Be real careful not to disturb that bark no more than I have to. Oh, oh my gosh, look at it. Bone, disengage. Oh, mines. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so good. Just look at that. You want to talk about tender. You want to talk about, you want to talk about juicy and tender. Don't get no better than that. I'm going to need a paper towel. Yeah. Wow. 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 Just totally shreddable, super soft. The crust on this is just next level. Next level. Oh. Give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. 
We use this community gardens, the Texas hot sauce to bind this stuff. And then you can get a little kick of that heat. It's awesome. Lane's barbecue brisket rub. It's everything you want. It's everything you want. Mm. I'm just able to just bite through even like a small piece without pulling apart. But still just like, you can just tear it apart. Like it's bold squash. <laughs> Best bold squash I ever have. Y'all come over to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. Check us out. Let me know what you thought about this video. Make suggestions for content down in the comment section down below. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Jesus.